take a look into the world of talented designers, wine connoisseurs, and celebrity chefs as they transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Whether it's a kitchen in need of a makeover with appliances by Bosch or a meal that cries out for the perfect wine pairing, let fine wine and design take you to new and exciting destinations. Tune in and taste the good life Wednesday nights at 7.30 on Cox 7 Arizona or right now on Channel 2644. Hi, I'm Denise Tyker, your host for Fine Wine and Design. Throughout history, there have been only a few select artists who have changed the way we view art. In the beginning, early man transcribed his world by painting and carving on rock walls and using crushed berries and clay for paint. When the first artists discovered pigments and began painting on paper and canvas, they eventually created distinct styles such as Impressionism, Abstract, Pointillism, Fauvism, Expressionism, Cubism, Surrealism, and any other ism they could come up with. And then came along Chris Derubis. Derubis began actually by experimenting with different tools to manipulate the way light reacted with the surface of metal. He introduced chemicals and paints to create unique chemical reactions and abstract sensualism was born. Derubis has since won the prestigious ARTV award and has been recognized nationally as the father of conceptual movement. And here at his gallery today, we bring you fine wine and design, as well as an opportunity to discover some of Arizona's finest artisans in their own studios, at home, and in their newly redesigned kitchens. Linda Kurowski of Tierra Linda Designs will open up her home and share a few tips that we can try in our own homes. Chef Janos will be joining me in the kitchen preparing a savory roasted duck breast in our looks and cooks feature with Bosch appliances. And David and I are gonna take it full circle right here with the perfect wine pairing that complements the bold flavors and the designs shared in today's lineup. A bold statement for any engagement, whether it's going to be a wedding, a celebration, or a really nice dinner party in your house, is going to be fresh flowers. Beautiful Earth is the Spanish to English translation of Tierra Linda, and that's just what Tierra Linda Designs brings to their clients. But not just any client. Her clients are amazing. We've got Linda Ronstadt, we've got Ozzy Osbourne on that lineup, and also my all-time favorite, Paul McCartney. When I think of Tierra Linda's work, I think of luxury, I think of elegance, I think of earthiness, which is an excellent segue for our first wine, which is the 2010 Picket Fence from Russian River Pinot Noir. So this particular varietal, Pinot Noir, is known as being the biggest headache for winemakers because of how thin the skin is. All right, so from growing the grapes to harvest to making the wine, so many things can go wrong that there's actually a very famous winemaker that was once quoted as saying that where God made Cabernet Sauvignon, the devil made Pinot Noir. But considering its elegance and how delicate it is, it can't help but express the ground that it's grown in, hence the earthiness. So do me a favor, put your hand over the top of the glass, and can you spin it around oh, like that? Yeah. Spin around? No, take a big smell. And you can smell oh, wow. a little bit of the earth. I mean, it's actually, it's not like it's dirty. You, know, you smell the fruit first, but you can smell the ground that it's grown in. And that's what's so awesome about Pinot Noir. It's very expressive. So why the hand over the glass? Well, what happens is the alcohol rises, and when it rises, it actually brings the aromas up. That's okay. what we're smelling. It creates elegance and also makes it very expressive. All right, so when we taste this, we're gonna look for three different things. We're gonna be looking for what the initial taste is. Mm -hmm. That's the front of the palate. Then we're looking for, uh, to, we're, looking, we're trying to recognize some of the complexity in the wine, which is gonna be mid-palate. And now let me explain that that's not front of your palate, mid-palate, and down your throat. This is actually has, as we conceive the wine, all right? So the front of the palate, we're gonna taste the fruit. The mid-palate, we're gonna start to taste some of the complexity. And then once we've swallowed it, that's gonna be the finish. This is where we're gonna start recognizing even more details about it, and we're also gonna see how long that finish lasts. Okay. okay, so let's do so this. Let's Here do we go. That. Ready? Ready? No, smell it and then okay. drink, right? Smell. I pulled a little bit of air in. Oh, I saw right. that. Makes the fruit blossom. Mm hmm. All right? Mm hmm. Now you've swallowed it mm -hmm. and you're recognizing some acidity. The fruit is not so much in the front of your mind anymore now that it's gone it's down your throat. Absolutely. Okay, so front, mid, back palate, not places. It's your perception so of the wine. 
Pinot Noirs are one of my favorite wines, and this picket fence is absolutely fabulous. And we'll be sharing more of David's favorite picks throughout the show, but first, let's go meet Linda. Take a look into the world of talented designers, wine connoisseurs, and celebrity chefs as they transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Whether it's a kitchen in need of a makeover with appliances by Bosch, or a meal that cries out for the perfect wine pairing, let fine wine and design take you to new and exciting destinations. Tune in and taste the good life Wednesday nights at 7.30 on Cox 7 Arizona, or right now on Channel 2644. So, Linda, the name of your company is Tierra Linda Designs. Yes. How did you come up with a name like that? Well, it's a funny story. A friend of mine, the man that I used to work for, who was kind of my mentor, mm -hmm. him and his partner, I had called them up and I had all these different names that I thought were fabulous, the Garden Gate and this and that, and they kept going, no, 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 no. And I said, okay, what do you think? And mm -hmm. Gus, in the background, says, Tierra Linda Designs with this fabulous accent, I'm like, I'm never gonna say it like that. Nobody's ever gonna say it like right. that. But I said, I'll take it, right. and it worked. And, it and my name's name in it. it. Exactly, so exactly. It's good. And it's obvious that you're very passionate about what you do. I do, I And am. as you know, those that are in design usually have that passion, that, that love for what we do. And I have a great deal of respect for, for what you do because as much as I love flowers, I wouldn't, I don't know how to arrange them, you know. I, I hire people like you to do that for my clients. So where does your passion come from? I don't even know. I can't even explain that. It's just I started working for another company and I would practice. <laughs> I would pull stuff out of the cooler and just practice. And from there, I just started designing stuff and right. it worked. And, and people probably started complimenting you on that. And, and I know that you have a very unique business. Tell us what makes you unique compared to some of the, the other flower shops or floral designers out there. A lot of the, most of the things I do, there's, there, you can't just walk into my shop and go in the cooler and pick something out. It's custom made. I know my clients, I know their homes, the colors of their homes, their linens, their dishes. Right. Uh, what they like, what they don't like. So you and get to know so your clients. Oh, big time. Okay, big do you, time. and you work with designers? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay, because I know that I would come to you um, a lot of times, especially after we've just done a remodel on a home, it's so nice to have those fresh flowers. And, it is. And I always say, you know, flowers are nice to get on an occasion other than a holiday. It's true. And you should have flowers all the time. Absolutely. They make your house smell so great. It's bringing the outside in. Right. You know, which is very comfortable mm -hmm. for people. Some people don't like to garden, mm -hmm. so you can pick up flowers or have them custom made for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever works for you. And I know you have some um, famous clientele, I, I do. I so I've been can we... told that I was, at times, florist to the stars. Florist to the stars. So can I ask who? And, sure. And maybe um, what their favorite flower is. Well, I've done things for Paul McCartney. Oh, get out. Are I, you he serious? has not called me, <laughs> but sorry, I do deal with his secretary. <laughs> I thought that was a topper. Oh, my God. Well, he, he has a ranch here, so he right. does send, the Homeowners Association has parties during the year, and, and he'll send flowers. How long have I known you and I've not known this? It's Are you kidding me? Well, I guess it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> no. Um, I have sent things to Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon when they were here visiting. Mm -hmm. They were up at Ventana and one of my clients is friends of theirs. Um, Linda Ronstadt is not only a client but a friend. She loves roses, anything fresh and gardeny. Yeah. Very small arrangements, even like this size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just numerous all over the place. Okay. And she loves to be in the kitchen doing it with me, so that's really fun. That is yeah. cool. I, um, with any design, we all have our tips and our tricks and our secrets and mm -hmm. our cool ways to do things yes. that set us apart from everybody else. And this is a true artistry, what you do. So what are, if you don't mind sharing with us some of your tips or your secrets or some, some cool ways that we can do our own floral arranging in our own homes? Sure. Mm -hmm. Little vases are great. Mm -hmm. You can pick stuff out of your yard. There's one over here that are just some uh, a piece of geranium and some little roses off my rose bush. Different containers, uh, a coffee pot, a teapot, a teacup. I mean, there's right. just so many fun things that you can do. The containers are cool. The containers, right. and you can get things from your florist or mm -hmm. from the wholesaler, or wherever you want to get them from, or mm -hmm. your yard. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be flowers. It can be greens. Right. So and that's kind of fun just to set a table that way. And just doing them um, in a unique way. I've seen Correct. them even where they've just done just a single flower. Yes. Well, like here, and, there's three, yes. there's different numbers. I like odd numbers. Well, odd. that's what design is. So thank you, Linda, so much for sharing all the tips, all the little 
exciting things about the stars and, and it's been really fun. what you do. Thank um, you. And I know that there are going to be a lot of people out there watching this that are going to want to reach you, are going to want to know how they can have flowers shipped because I understand you ship all over the world. I do. So how can we reach you? Uh, my website is tierralindadesigns.com and the phone number and email are on there. So feel free to email me or give me a call and we'll take care of everything for you Perfect. anywhere in the world. Well, we're very excited about that. I'd also like to share that not only are you a, a floral designer, but you're an interior designer. Correct. And you have just recently renovated your home. So we're going to take your newly renovated kitchen on a test drive right after this. Take a look into the world of talented designers, wine connoisseurs, and celebrity chefs as they transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Whether it's a kitchen in need of a makeover with appliances by Bosch or a meal that cries out for the perfect wine pairing, let Fine Wine and Design take you to new and exciting destinations. Tune in and taste the good life Wednesday nights at 7.30 on Cox 7 Arizona or right now on Channel 2644. Choosing products for your kitchen or bath is like composing a symphony. That's why Ferguson showrooms have trained professionals who can help you orchestrate your dream. Find a showroom near you at ferguson.com. Introducing the latest in German engineering. The high performance you expect, the quality you demand. It's the sound the door makes, the light response of the controls, the solid feel of the materials. The quiet operation, even at 1200 RPM. Introducing the appliance lineup from Bosch. Fine German engineering, you park in your kitchen. Bosch, invented for life. Green Living Magazine brings you the latest in organic cooking, interiors, fashion and beauty, gardening, health and wellness, chef and celebrity interviews, and easy solutions to green up your life. Subscribe and learn more at greenlivingaz.com. Good looks is only one objective when making upgrades and transformations to any space. When designed right, your kitchen should cook well, too. And we just finished cooking in the kitchen with Chef Janos. And Chef, tell us what you made today. Well, this is a great kitchen to work in, first of all. So I made a duck breast. So I seared the duck breast, finished it in the oven, so it was pan roasted. Okay. And served it with these mushroom chilaquiles. So chilaquiles is really a dish you see all over this region. But you usually see it in someone's home where it's stale tortilla chips, and cheese and enchilada sauce. So we take the idea and sort of blow it out a little bit so it's layers of corn tortillas. Okay. You can eat this. And stale tortillas. Well, actually, we fry the corn. We, okay. we fry the tortillas rather than... Okay. Because we eat them too fast for them to go That's stale. That's right. I was so layers of the, of the crisp, crisp tortillas. Okay. And cheese, which in this case we use a cheddar, mm -hmm. and mushrooms, onions, scallions, more cheese, a red chili volute rather than sort of an enchilada, an enchilada sauce. We make a casserole out of that. Bake that up and, and then we cut it into squares and then we cook this up with with a duck actually. So is it layered like a, it's layered. a lasagna? Yeah, like a, like, a, like a lasagna. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then, so that's made separately. Mm -hmm. And then here you see this is chayote squash. That's what this is. Right. So this is, you, you peel the squash. It's really hard, firm meated squash dice it, steam it for just a minute, and then we saute that. Just really simply a little, a little bit of olive oil and salt, and salt and pepper. And then the sauce that we're doing, I think, is really kind of interesting. It's a mole sauce, a native seed search mole. I call it that because we use ingredients we get from Native Seed Search, a local organization, nonprofit here in Tucson. And some of the ingredients that we use in this mole go back Oh, three or four thousand years mm -hmm. in this region. There's about six different types of chilies in there, um, nuts and seeds and fruit 
And we do, this one is actually Holy finished cow. with a little chocolate. Yeah. Now, um, where do you find those ingredients? You find those at the Native Seed Search store on Hedrick and Tucson. Oh, do you really? Yeah, do, yeah. No special order? Or... No. no. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. And, and please tell us again what this is. This, this is diet. a chayote, chayote squash. Chayote squash. Yeah, now, if you're, if you're from New Orleans, you'd see this and you say, well, that's not a chayote squash, that's a merleton. Okay. But you wouldn't say it like that. I can't say it like they say it. It sounds like it's got no R's, no L's, and kind of by, by a vowel. Right, But uh, right. the same squash. It grows it in this part that, of the country. And it has that texture, as we talked earlier, of cucumber. Right. But um, it was interesting because Linda says she uses it in her floral presentations yeah. as well. That's right. So we were going to make an edible floral presentation by the end of the day, yeah. right? We're going to try exactly. that. So, well, very good. We were so fortunate to be able to cook in Linda's kitchen great today. Kitchen. It is a great kitchen, yeah. but it's an unusual kitchen. It's 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 a little different layout. Um, again, Linda is an interior designer by her own right. She's a fabulous floral designer. She's also an interior designer, and she has done that kitchen entirely by herself. And the cabinetry and the quartz counters, which I know we both love. Yeah, they're fantastic. Absolutely, and the Bosch appliances. Um, all came together, and I'm going to talk as a designer myself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful considering the, the unusual space layout because this kitchen is not square. This is a rectangular kitchen, yeah. although although long and narrow. Did you not? I, I felt there was plenty of room you know, in there. It, it, it wasn't like one of those kitchens you, you, you find on a train, you know, just long and narrow right. and, 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 and you can't work in it. It made the proper triangles, the space was there, and mm -hmm. you had everything was, which is nice because you can really grab everything, anything you need. It's within hands, right. it's within hands length. length. It, it so was it made, very yeah, convenient. That, that was great. The cabinets are good, really nice, and they look mm -hmm. good too. It looks great They're looking beautiful. kitchen. And I'd never cooked on Bosch appliances right. before. Right, we so talked I, about you know, that. Bosch dishwashers but never Bosch stoves. So how do you feel about that? It worked just fine, you know, it, it's simple. The, the, you know, sometimes stoves and ovens get so complicated with the gadgets and, and trying to figure out how, which dial does mm -hmm. what and how you turn it mm -hmm. on and turn it off. This, this, it, the layout's simple, it's really easy to use, so that's a nice thing. And it's got, on one of the burners has a power setting, which is almost as much as a professional stove. So, you know, got my pan nice and hot, Quickly, it was easy to cook on. It seemed like easy to clean. Mm -hmm. So no, there's enough room between the burners to put decent sized pans. Okay, on. It worked so really well, it worked yeah. really yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting that you have not cooked on a Bosch no. um, appliance. So that was a fun experience. Yeah, for you. yeah it, was it was fun successful. for me to watch. <laughs> and I'm sure that Linda's going to enjoy the fact that she had you in her kitchen. So well, that was very well, cool. If I clean up, she might. Yeah, if you go, <laughs> we'll get someone to do that All for right. you. <laughs> But yeah, and I sat in there with you the whole time, and yeah. there was plenty of room, yeah. plenty of room in that kitchen. And um, and this again, is professional. I mean, this is exactly the dish I would serve at my restaurant. No accommodation for a home kitchen. Wow, and it's yeah. going to taste exactly. I can't wait to taste it. It's going to taste exactly the same. I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and you've written a couple of cookbooks. I've as got well. a couple of cookbooks. It's the mm -hmm. first book I did. Yano's recipes and tales from mm -hmm. a Southwest restaurant was stories and recipes from from Yano's, our first restaurant, okay. and great stories and sort of a compendium of good cooking tips, and the great chili relleno cookbook. Did a few years ago, it's really all about the chili relleno, which is to me sort of one of the, the great cultural culinary icons mm -hmm. of the region. And I noticed I was breezing through that a little earlier, and you have great pictures in there too. Yeah, both tells of a story. Them have good pictures, exactly. Yeah, awesome. And if you're wanting to find out more about the recipes today and how to prepare these yourself, you can also go to findwayanddesign.com and find the recipes and learn a little bit more about Chef Janos and his restaurants. And we'll also be pairing a fabulous wine with this meal when we come back. Take a look into the world of talented designers, wine connoisseurs, and celebrity chefs as they transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Whether it's a kitchen in need of a makeover with appliances by Bosch, or a meal that cries out for the perfect wine pairing. Let fine wine and design take you to new and exciting destinations. Tune in and taste the good life Wednesday nights at 7.30 on Cox 7 Arizona or right now on channel 2644. Choosing products for your kitchen or bath is like composing a symphony. That's why Ferguson showrooms have trained professionals who can help you orchestrate your dream.
Find a showroom near you at ferguson.com. Introducing the latest in German engineering. The high performance you expect, the quality you demand. It's the sound the door makes, the light response of the controls, the solid feel of the materials. The quiet operation, even at 1200 RPM. Introducing the appliance lineup from Bosch. Fine German engineering, you park in your kitchen. Bosch, invented for life. Green Living Magazine brings you the latest in organic cooking, interiors, fashion and beauty, gardening, health and wellness, chef and celebrity interviews, and easy solutions to green up your life. Subscribe and learn more at greenlivingaz.com. So we have the duck and the mushroom, which is going to pair really nicely with the picket fence Pinot Noir. And what the pairings are, there's actually two principles that we're going to have here. We're going to have the mushroom, which is going to be the earthy taste that we have in the dish, matching the earthy taste of the wine. Remember how I told you it's very mm -hmm. expressive, the ground that's grown in? And then we also are going to not bully the duck out of the way on the palate, and the duck's not going to bully the Pinot Noir out of the way on the palate as well. All right, now let's move on to the chocolate mole sauce. Now we're going to go to Spain. We're going to be trying a Carranza, which is going to be from Rioja, and this is 2007. The house is Bodegas Palencio, and uh, this particular Tempranillo blend is going to be very expressive of Spain. So we're tasting a Spanish sauce, the, ch the chocolate mole, and it's going to have a little bit of that, that sweet chocolate, chocolate uh, upfront fruitness to it. So we're going to taste the uh, red fruit from the wine. And we're also going to be noticing that the spicy texture of the food and the spiciness of this wine are also going to complement each other. Mm -hmm. Very good. And it's interesting that you had chose two wines. This obviously, for the duck, is a lighter, mm -hmm. a lighter feel, which mm -hmm. is what I probably would have done with this. Well, I think I'm learning yeah, a little something. With all the different yeah. palettes that are out there. Right. But um, to pair a spicy with a, with a spicy mm -hmm. is sometimes they tell you not to do that. So this is going to actually bring out the flavors a little bit more? Well, actually, it's the principle of like with like. If you take the similar characteristics of this wine with the similar characteristics in a spicy dish, okay. they'll complement each other. It won't be over spice, over, if over that's what you think. Spice, over yeah. dominant. Okay. Yeah, it won't, it won't uh, blow your palate away. Mm -hmm. So um, do you suggest that you have both glasses of wine? With what, would that hurt anything? I mean, if you drank too <laughs> much, that would be maybe an issue. But if you think about it, if you've got more harmony going on with your dish, I don't, right. see, I don't see how why that wouldn't work. In a lot of cases, I like to see a white wine going with perhaps the vegetables on one side of the dish, mm -hmm. and then a red wine that's pairing with maybe something that's more justified to be paired with a, with a red wine. Okay, so then one more question for you. Mm -hmm. If you just wanted to have the one wine, mm -hmm. can will this also work with the duck? It, it would, it would. Um, when I'm going for a perfect pairing, I'm, I want to nail it. So right. I would, the, the, see, you know, you have a dish that's really uh, actually uh, dynamic. There's a lot going on Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. It me, was it, very complex and yeah. it, was, it, was a, it was wonderful, but there was a lot of flavors and a lot of textures. And um, again, it, that's the cool thing about working with chefs is that they bring that dynamics you know, to the plate, mm -hmm. if you will, and you're doing the same thing with the wine pairing. And I would see this. This is more mm -hmm. your palate, and this is more my palate. Okay. So, David, obviously you have a passion mm -hmm. and, and a gift for the art of wine, which is a talent in and of itself. Obviously, listening to you today, you've shared with us how it is actually an art to, mm -hmm. to not even know about the wine, but to be able to pair it not only with food, but art itself. Mm -hmm. So tell us about some of the projects you're working on, some of the businesses. I know you're very involved in the community and you have several businesses. Share with us a little bit about what you do. Well, I believe that if people are educated on wine, they're going to feel more comfortable about the money they spend, all right? And it begins there. So I find myself teaching the the uh, basics of wine again and again and again because that's really important. It has to get there. I have uh, a website called teachingwineonline.com where you can go and take wine classes, virtual wine classes. Mm -hmm. I am the host and sommelier of a network marketing company called Wine Comet and this is wine and food education and entertainment which is what the, the product is. And then I'm also managing wine programs around the valley such as Vine Expressions and Gilbert and I also help people develop their wine clubs as well. Okay. So you are a busy man. I am. 
Um, uh, but I love it. It's a, yeah. it's. Uh, I'm passionate about what I do. I can't wait to wake up in the morning. Yeah, and that's true with any artist. I think that when you can express and love what you do, and and myself as a designer, I, it's very rewarding because I can bring beauty to a home. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the same thing by being. Be bringing a, a beauty, a, a love, a passion to someone's um, meal or entertaining mm -hmm. or their friends and, and the ambiance, if you will. We both help people live their life at a higher level. Absolutely, that's a good way to put it. So now we are in the gallery of Darubis Fine Art of Battle. And there are some fabulous pieces in here that are all wine inspired as well. I shouldn't say all, but many of them are because of his, Chris's love for wine. And um, we're in Old Town Scottsdale in a fabulous gallery and we have fabulous wine. What wine, if you were to choose a wine for the feel, the ambiance, the art in here, what, mm -hmm. what would you pick and why? Uh, well, this one is the one that's speaking to me because of when I walked in, there was a particular piece that jumped right out at me, all right? So when you're at a wine tasting and you're tasting several wines, let's say you're tasting a dozen or more wines, there's gonna be one that really speaks to you, all right? That's what happens when I walk into a place such as this, when you actually see a piece that catches your eye, it's really approachable, and then as I walked over to the piece and I took a closer look at it, I started noticing noticing the complexities, I started looking deeper into the the work itself, just like this, this wine, as you start tasting it, the very first sip is approachable, and then as you start to analyze it, and it goes through the front of your palate, the mid palate, and then finishes, you start to digest, and you're actually being able to pick out not just the simplicities, but the great texture and the, the uh, lack of simplicity as you start looking at it. Right. It's, it's interesting because, again, we talk about the senses of art and the senses of wine, and the artwork, the wine artwork in particular in, in this gallery, almost, you can almost taste the wine. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's often hard to portray wine on camera because we can't tell by looking at these glasses if we've got a, a Pinot Noir or a Cab mm -hmm. or, or a Redzin, right? right? Yep. So it's hard to get that. But looking at this artwork, it almost made me want to go grab that glass out of the piece mm -hmm. and, and drink it. So it gives you that feeling of, of it being alive. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about uh, wines having, uh, having a velvet taste, and some of these are, are very velvety, very lush in feel. So the wine, it, it makes sense when you go to an art walk and you have a glass of wine in your hand and you're really experiencing the, the whole feeling of the art. Having the right wine paired with the right artist would probably make a huge difference, I would think. Uh, I th you know, one thing I always say is that, well, a picture mm -hmm. says a thousand words, there's a love story in every bottle of wine. This is the first time I've thought about actually trying to pair wine with art. Thought about it for a while, but this is the ideal situation. Here we have a show that's, that talks about art, talks about wine, talks about pairing food, wine, and art together. And here's a perfect location to do it with the Rubus Fine Art of Metal and his wine pieces. The uh, I Love Red Wine piece, where the heart is coming out of the two glasses as they toast, to, to Chris, it's a passion of love, his artwork and his wine all together in one piece. And as you move past his work, you actually see it moving. So you feel the wine splashing in the glass and the heart just moving around uh, as, as a love piece for the art and for the wine. Thank you, David, and thank you, Philip, and Darubis Fine Art for providing this bold and inspiring backdrop for our show today. If you'd like to learn more about David and his adventures or anything else you've seen on our show, you can do so by visiting us at finewineanddesign.com. Cheers. Cheers.